Get me Cape Kennedy. Yes, sir. Very well, Colonel Benson. We'll attempt a rescue. But this is a tough one. You can say that again. Anyway, good luck. Gee whiz. He sits there playing chess while those three guys in that spaceship are heading for disaster. I just don't dig him. Try the retros again. It's no use. The circuit's dead. It's the radiation. It's reached an all-time high. Temperatures up around the 120s again. Increase refrigeration. Yes, the radiation level's too high for the Earth to get the safety beam through. We're too close to the sun. I'm getting closer every second. Right, let's go over it once again. The sun probe rocket is heading straight into the sun. And unless we can fire the retros to make the rocket turn round, those three solar knots are doomed. Well, uh, Mr. Tracy, the only solution is for us to fire the retros by radio beam. Well, the radio complex in Thunderbird 3 would seem the obvious choice. But, Scott, the transmission range of Thunderbird 3 isn't powerful enough. I think Thunderbird 2 transmitter would stand a much better chance. Well, that would apply if both craft were at ground level. Agreed. But we could take Thunderbird 3 into space and get through much more effectively. What's your opinion, Brains? Well, Mr. Tracy, I think we may be underestimating the heat and radiation resistances of our uh, spacecraft. But the transmission potential of Thunderbird 2 could certainly be tremendous. Well, we've got to make up our minds soon. The whole world is waiting for international rescue to act, and after three hours, we're no nearer a decision. Let's face it. Both Thunderbird craft have an equal chance of success or failure. Why don't we gamble on one or other of them paying off? Right. Gordon has hit the nail on the head. We'll launch a two-prong rescue attempt. First of all, we've got to get Thunderbird 3 launched as soon as possible. When do you think that could be, Brains? Well, the radio equipment will have to be modified but I should think launching could take place soon after sunup. Right. Go and organize that now, Brains. Yes, Mr. Tracy. I'm on my way. Virgil, you better go to the computer room and work out what point is best for Thunderbird 2 to project a safety beam towards the sun probe. Get Grandma to organize some auxiliary clothing. Okay, Father. Father, we'll need an extra crew member to operate the safety beam. All right, Alan. You better take Tintin along with you. Launching takes place at 0800 hours. <laughs> You know what to do? Yes, Father. Let's hope it works from that distance. It's got to. It's as close as you dare go. Good luck, all of you. Your first mission, Tintin. Make it a successful one. I'll do my best, Mr. Tracy. Take up launch positions. FAB.
Stand by for blast off. Lift off. Okay, Alan, I'm coming up. See you later, Tintin. Yes, Scott. Okay, Scott, we're clear of atmosphere. Tintin, you'd better get the electronic side lined up. We'll be in the danger zone in about 65 hours. Yes, Alan. I've already started. Right. Auxiliary clothing. Auxiliary clothing. Check. Snow dispersal unit. Snow dispersal unit. Check. No, you'd better make that too. It's going to be pretty cold out there on the mountain. Two it is. What about the transmitter truck? I've already got that in the pod. Uh, perhaps we'd better take uh, the mobile computer too, just in case. Uh, that's it, right over there. Right. Will that be all? Yeah, yeah, that's all. I'd best get straight down to the hangar now. I'll have these fed to the pod by the automatic beltway. <laughs> 